Oh, and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor and subscribe to the John Con Report wherever you get your podcast. And you can see us on YouTube. Go to Empire Media, A M P I R E, like button, subscribe button. You know the drill. Today, I'm joined by the voice of the Washington Commanders and a host on ESPN 630, Bram Weinstein, as we rehash Washington's 23 to 21 preseason opening loss to the Carolina Panthers. We dig into everything Carson Wentz. The fumble by Antonio Gibson, Brian Robinson's good day, the defense, and Sam Howell, and much more. So stick around as I'm going to be joined by Bram Weinstein, again, the voice of the Washington Commanders. Here we go. All right, I'm here with Bram Weinstein, the voice of the Commanders, and of course you can hear him on ESPN 630. Preseason game number one is in the books. In general, Bram, what was, what was your big takeaway from this game? Uh, great debuts by Sam Howell, great debut by Brian Robinson, for sure. Uh, offense took a little time to get going, but I think overall, considering what we've seen in practice, in totality of three drives, not bad. Um, and, you know, like Antonio Gibson can't fumble the ball. Right. That, to me, was a big takeaway because that, of course, was a problem last year. You all know that. I think it was five fumbles in the first half of the year, first 10 games, lost three, six for the season. And that's one of the things that Ron Rivera said after the game, a big problem for him is, when he starts kind of going sideways like that, the ball starts coming out a little bit. And when he was going down, that ball was a little bit loose. How big an issue do you think? It, it's one fumble of the preseason, but how big a deal is this? I think it's a big deal to carry over from last year. And hopefully it's just something that, you know, can be rectified in the preseason. Um, he did an interview in the locker room and, you know, said, I can't do that. And took, you know, took uh, he, he took responsibility for it. And it is a big deal. Turnovers are a huge deal. They outgained the Panthers. I mean, this is weird because, you know, they had three quarterbacks playing the first half. So it's really weird. But, like, Washington outgained them in the first half. We're trailing at halftime. Why? Because they turned the ball over twice. I mean, that's the NFL for you. And the margin for error is so slim, you can't have turnovers. And, you know, if nothing else, putting in Robinson, that happened on purpose. Like, you know, that was that was a signal. Like, we're not going to have this this year. And you saw what Robinson can do. And they have answers. Like, I didn't think they really had another place to go when this was happening a year ago. They do this time around, so he's going to have to fix it. I like Robinson, and to me today, what he showed was that ability to set up his blockers, patience, and Ron Rivera talked about forward lane. You saw that. Always seemed to get extra yards. What jumped out to you about him? You know, sometimes it's just a feel, and I, this is it's so hard to know in practice, like, what's really going on, you know, because they're playing each other. They know what each other is doing. It gets repetitive, and it's just kind of hard to know. And we're kind of gleaning things off of, well, I saw the running back coach say this per this thing to him, and therefore I'm making a conclusion that that's something he needs to work on. And then they just need to get into the game, and I think it's kind of you know it when you see it. And for a first impression, this guy knows how to play running back. You know, like I am like I was worried the way he runs, at least in practice, he's too upright. He's either going to get blown up or he's going to fumble or if he's not – but. He got the head lower, like right at the moment he needed to. He said to us afterwards, I was in the locker room with him, and he said, he actually said, some of that stuff might look pretty, but I messed up a couple of places where I didn't set it up the right way. Um, what's different about him than Antonio is he's a pure running back coming from an offense that has produced a lot of running backs in the NFL. So just off first impressions, I think he's ahead of the curve. And I think that's a good sign for them because – well, like, listen, I'm not down on Antonio. Like, like obviously, can't keep fumbling. I'm not down on him. But, you know, like, the reality is, like, they put too much on him a year ago. Either way, someone needs to spell him, and this was a good first sign, I think. With Antonio, and I'll ask you, if I'm going to my little two cents on that, because Ron Israel, when he came in after the game and said he's got to low, run lower in the shoulder, and he was pleased with how he went back and responded to that fumble. It's the same stuff we heard last year. Yeah. Is that something to be at least – is it concerned or pay attention to even more? I think this year, what is different is if this continues, he won't play or not as much, you know, like I think last year, I don't think they had much of a choice. And some of that was decision-making with the roster. Like Jared Patterson actually looks a little different to me this year, whether he makes the team or not, because of numbers, I don't know. He looks a little different. But last year when he was starring at this time of year, I felt like a mistake was made when they let Peyton Barber go that Patterson needed another year. Don't get fooled by what's happening in these preseason games, especially against all the backups. Like, develop him for a year, but keep the veteran 
And I think they would have leaned on Barber more last year. I don't think he had much of a choice. This time around, McKissick has looked great in camp. He only had a couple opportunities and had one nice move today. He's looked great in camp. Robinson's starting to look the part. I think they have options. So I think this time around, if this continues, and hopefully it will, but if this continues, I think he'll play less. And I think they'll feel comfortable with him playing less. And I think to McKissick's point, what also helps that package is having multiple receivers. You can go into maybe more three and four receiver sets that keeps McKissick on the field. So you can not even just having another running back, it's having other options as an offense in general. I don't think he's just a third down back. Now, I don't think he's a primary between the tackles back, but I don't think he's just a third down back. But he keeps getting better and better and better. He is really one of the best at the craft, at the position. He knows where to go, where to be, when to cut, very shifty. And he looks a little bigger to me. And, you know, I was I was worried about him at the end of last year. It was a very serious injury. He had. I, I thought his career was in jeopardy. And when they resigned him, that was a sign he's okay and he's fine. And he's looked great. So, again, I really feel like this is more about, and it's funny because all spring and into the summer, just the way Gibson transformed his body, I know what his commitment is. I think he's sitting at a point now where he's looking, his contract's going to run out pretty soon. So he's thinking about things like that. He needs to have a big year, and it feels like it's set up to be a big year for him. Um, but the fumbling is going to get him on the bench. And they have options this time around. So it's going to have to, it's going to, have to stop. It's funny with McKissick because every time I watch him, I, I keep thinking they almost let him get away. They really messed around too much with that bridge deal. But he is so important. And you saw that on that little cut and run. It was it was a, like 15-yard gain, I think it was. Yeah. But it's that quick cut ability that just separates him, I think, from other backs. And also picking up the blitz, who he's done a pretty nice job with. Yeah, he's like the real-life version like of a Madden player. You know what I mean? Like, and like I watch him. He's like a video game. Like, he just kind of knows where to go. He's kind of a cheat code a little bit. And – he can pop them off every once in a while. He's an extraordinarily underrated player. I mean, not here because we've seen it, you know, but because this team has had the record that it's had, so nobody's really paying attention to them. Like, you know, he's got like behind Alvin Kamara, the most receptions of any running back in the NFL over the last couple of years. Like we know this because we're following him. He keeps getting better to me. He's someone that is getting better at the craft. And I hope he doesn't get lost in all this because between Dotson, McLaurin, Samuel, who that was nice to see him out there and running around, Cam Sims, Deami Brown, even Dax Milne, Gibson, Robinson. Like, there could be games where he's not incorporated very much, and I think that's a mistake. Like, they need to find a way to incorporate him. He is a difference maker for them. We're going to get to Carson Wentz in a minute because that's the quarterback. We always got to talk about him. But you brought up Curtis Samuel, so let's go there. What did you think of what you saw? Limited sample size, but what did you think? Limited sample size, but what I really liked and what was noticeable to me was, and I think this is where – he is going to, I think, help them the most. Forget catching the ball or making the plays. He's going in motion every play. Why is he going in motion every play? Because the other team has no idea how he's going to be used. And I think hopefully that is the first sign to me of Scott Turner trying to get a tell of a defense to help Carson Wentz. Whether the ball's going to Curtis or not, him moving around forces the defense to adjust because you don't know what he's going to do. That's the kind of versatility that he brings. So that's what really stood out to me today was, Seeing all that motion, that was purposeful. That was, that was on purpose that they were doing that specifically with him in those early drives. And it's funny you know that because I noticed I noted that in my notes. And every time I line up where they're at and draw a line, if he's going in motion. And there were even times it wasn't so much motion, but you're, you're shifting again. Yes. And so it was always doing that. What I like, too, is when he caught the ball, his ability to cut, like he looks better than at any point last year to me. Do you agree? Yeah, I think so. I mean – you know, I was skeptical like everybody with the plan, you know, because because of last year. If it was anybody else, like when they said at the beginning when Gibson didn't practice first week and they said, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because, you know, I, I don't know. And then he did show up that next Monday and he was fine. Like with Samuel, you're skeptical based on how they communicated about him. So I was. And the last couple of days, last week at the practice and now today, I feel like, OK, I think he is good to go. And I now understand the plan. They want to just take it easy with him, get him into football shape. But when push comes to shove, we need to see him out there on game day. And there he was. So what role is he going to play? I don't know. But I think today was the first hint of this is the guy that's going to be the tell for the defense, whether it goes to him or not. And I could be wrong about that, but that's how I read it when I watched it today. I did too. And I think there's, because like you said, there's a reason there's something in motion all the time. All right, now let's go to Wentz because, again, quarterback, always the biggest deal here. 
First chance for us to see him in a game action. What did you think? Uh, two things I really like, completion percentage, you know, 10 of 13. It's hard to complain about that. Um, he did try one deep ball to Dotson that if it wasn't for a hold, might have been a touchdown. So that wasn't exactly inaccurate either. Um, there was what one that was short on Terry, I think it was a deeper pass. So, you know, the, obviously there's stuff to do here, but I think it was good for him. I think it's something for them to lean on. I think it's something for them to back up and say, see, we told you, like, it's not as bad as you guys are portraying it. So that, I think that was a really good sign. And those were the Carolina starters out there. And I think they have a very good defense. So I think that was a really good start for him. And the other thing I would just say is, and it's all short sample size because it's so hard, you know, like to, to make real judgments about it. But, you know, Carolina walks out of the field, takes the lead. Their first after a three and out. Their second drives a fumble. They score touchdowns, 10 nothing. You know, that was some resilience. They turned around. We haven't seen them have a drive like that in practice or in that scrimmage in any of the drills the entire camp. And all of a sudden, when, you know, there's a live team out there, that was really refreshing and reassuring. And they walked down the field, scored a touchdown. And so I think that that was a really, really, really good sign that they showed resilience. And he headed that. Like, he never looked nervous to me. The confidence wasn't there. There was a couple times where I could nitpick and say, he's got to get it out of there faster. You could see it. But outside of that, um, I think for a debut, I'm pretty pleased. And, you know, trust me, we've talked about this a lot. I was very, very, very nervous about what we were going to see here. And now that we've had this, I'm really glad that he played. I thought it was funny when he said this press conference, I haven't played in the preseason in a very long time. I think he needed it. I think this offense needed it. And I look at it more as a success. That was 170 yards of offense. If it wasn't for two turnovers, you know, I don't know. Would they have been leading at halftime? Would they have had a couple of touchdown drives? Would you have felt differently about it? I don't know. Well, and for me, it's always been, I do, but I do buy into the, this is a process. And I've always, I have been saying that, I haven't been freaking out about anything from practice because I, you know it's great. It's a new situation for him. There are a couple of times a day we can tell, like, okay, getting used to certain guys, getting used to Armani, Armani Rogers on a play, or maybe maybe the ball's just a little bit off. You can't, I'm not gonna, you know, that you, I'm not gonna quibble on that kind of stuff. Because that's stuff that can work out. And you get Logan Thomas in there, it becomes different. You get John Bates or Cole Turner in there, it becomes different. I think the other thing is too, what you see is. When that pot, when it's tight in the pocket, he's got that ability to just, without getting your feet around, get the ball out here on the side. He can change the tra trajectory. That's the stuff that worries me. <laughs> it is the stuff. Well, that that stuff. That, but sometimes that's going to be a good thing because mm -hmm. he has an ability. Sometimes it won't, and it's almost like depends on what the results the play is whether that time was good or bad. But I think overall it was a good showing for him, a good first step. Yes, no doubt. No, I think it was. I, I really, I do. And, um, you know, I was as skeptical as anybody of what's been going on here. All the, you know, forget the baggage stuff, with the character assassination stuff. I've seen none of that. And I actually like, I, I don't even like in, in just in our short experience with him. I don't know where that came from. Honestly, that feels, that feels off to me, but the accuracy thing is real. You know, his decision-making at times, especially on plays that break down or slow developing plays is real. His looseness with the ball is real. We've seen a lot of the inaccuracy in practice. I'm with you. I don't want to dump all of it on him. They've had moving parts on the offensive line for three weeks. These are all new receivers to him, too. Terry McLaurin wasn't there in the spring. The, now the tight ends aren't around. The ones he was working with weren't playing. Like, so I want to be fair to him. And for a first go, the lights go on. I thought he was pretty good. You know, like, for three drives, one of them isn't his fault the way it ended. And the third one, they walked out of the score a touchdown, like, I think for a first go, I'm pretty pleased if I'm Scott Turner. Right I also think this offense is definitely further ahead than it was under Ryan Fitzpatrick at this no point. Doubt. By, by a good amount. because well, like that, that was, was obvious in the spring. Right. And that's yep. what I'm saying because what's where, where you also see Carson in practice in some of the games, you're motioning guy to get to a different spot because he knows where this guy's supposed to be. I think the other point that Ron Rivera made is, and this is like, it sounds like a small thing, but it really isn't. It's a big deal for them because it gives you more time on the line getting in and out of the huddle in a timely fashion. It means you're, you're processing the play, relaying the play on time and in a good rhythm to get out of the huddle and get more time at the line. It's an operational thing that's a big deal to me. Yeah, oh, I think so. Um, I think there's a lot of moving parts here. I think we're a long way away from knowing who the starters are here or a, a long way away from knowing what the offense looks like here. I'm very hopeful that they start getting some of these offensive linemen back soon. So I think it's necessary for them Hopefully, Cole Turner will get back so he can get some reps out there in the preseason because they're going to be relying on him early. Um, you know, 
So outside of that, um, I agree with you. I think all of this is good. And more than anything, the reassuring part is when you do see them out there, you do recognize they have a different level of athlete playing the position than they've had in a long time. And that part, you know, I've never lost sight of. I was a little concerned about his confidence and a little concerned about just mechanics and accuracy. But if they can flip that light switch back on at some point and get him back to a place where he's really comfortable again, you know, it's not going to be perfect. He might not be a top five quarterback, which is way better than what they've had. And if the offense is going to be at least dangerous, you know, in a top half of the league offense, which I don't think is unreasonable to think they could be with their skill position people, then we're not putting everything on the defense to win the games for them. And we may end up playing the game in the gym. And Jahan Dotson didn't get many opportunities. So we we can talk about him another time. But I'm curious, let's go to another quarterback. Because, and Taylor Heineke played after Carson Wentz. But I want to go jump to Sam Howell because he had the, the comeback and he had the he became the summer legend for, for today, yeah. at least. Um, what did you think of him? Just I mean, I'll give you my little two cents and you can go. I saw some poise in the pocket. And one thing I thought we would see today is his ability to use more of his game, the athleticism, because that's what he did in college, getting out of the pocket, playing on the move, getting out of trouble and then making the place happen. We saw that, too. But what did you think of you know the weirdest sensation I had watching him today? Because in practice, we've talked about this a lot. Like, and we've kind of joked, if he was three, four inches taller, he would have been a second round pick this year, if not higher, right? But because of the, I think it's the height. Like, I think is the reason why he ended up going where he went. And in practice, we've talked a lot about how he looks like he's throwing from his tippy toes because he can't see over things. He's not Carson Wentz. He's not 6'5". And he looks small. Well, the oddest thing happened today out on the field he looked bigger to me. Like, I know he's not, but you you made, you made said this about Zach Pascal, the, the receiver for the culture. You're like, this guy's 6'2", but he plays like he's not, like he's 5'8", or something. Sam Howell is, I don't know what he is, 5'10". I think, you know? I think five, I, I'm think i 5'9 and a, and a half. I'm yeah. seeing to the 5'9". I'm half. taller than him. Yeah, I'm, so, see, I'm seeing almost eye to eye. Yeah, so I'm six feet tall. I'm taller than him. So he's 5'10", whatever it is. But he actually, today, he looked bigger to me. I don't know. Maybe it was just, I don't know. Something about that was really odd. And I liked all the poise, obviously. Clearly against third stringers, you know, but he's playing with third stringers. But against third stringers, this isn't too big for him. Um, I mean, the guy's numbers speak for themselves. You know, like, he broke a program record for passing yards, program record for passing touchdowns, single season record for passing touchdowns. And last year, because all those NFL players like Tiami Brown weren't on his roster anymore, he was asked to run a lot more than he did. We saw that today. So, um, voice is there. Um, and anybody's going to bring us back from 14 down in the fourth quarter, I don't care what the circumstances are, you're a winner in my book. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is that there's no overtime. So, whatever, whatever I appreciated they... that they went for two. I really appreciated that. We actually said it in the booth. I said, if they score, they got to go for two. There's no ties in the preseason. We're not moving on here. Um, and, uh, and obviously, to be clear, there is not a competition for the second job. This is Taylor Heineke's job. No, I don't think so. Job, and, and Carson Wentz is clearly the starter. Nobody's disputing any of that. But I think it's always fun when the young kid can come in and make some plays well, and energize a little bit. When, when you say you have a quarterback in development, I mean, we've had plenty of these in recent years. Steven Montez never looked like that. You know, Cole Kelly was here, never looked like that. And you can name a number of players that have come through through the years, never looked like that. There's a reason why this guy was a draft pick and could have been a very high draft pick at one point in his career. You saw that today. So what we have in development is – promising which i think is different than the project quarterback who may one day shock you and play in the nfl i think if you watch this today and you look at his background and you hear all the things you hear about him from his ex-coaches and all that stuff i think you know that there's a possibility he will be a starting quarterback it's just not going to be here right now for sure well yeah and i i think too from my end i think if they can develop into develop him into a solid backup that's a big win. I agree. So I, I'm not looking at him as some sort of future starter. Certainly not, certainly not at this point. But if he can develop, because that's the whole thing this year for him. Can they develop into a solid backup? Because Taylor Heineke's contract is up. So let's go to, to the defense, because a rough first series, yes. third downs, what would you make of that? The third down numbers are 
you know, disturbing because that was the biggest problem, especially early last year, where they were in a third and long situation, historically one of the worst teams in the NFL through like six, eight weeks. It was not a couple of weeks, it was like six to eight weeks of it. Um, so that's something obviously needs to be rectified. You don't want to see that here. Um, but it's weird because Baker Mayfield's out there, and then Sam Darnold's out there, and PJ Walker's out there. And so it's so hard to like, their offenses are completely different when they change these people and then, but the same results are happening. So the third down stuff, I think is something that, you know, I, the way I look at this is like, I don't really look at the score and I don't really look at kind of just in general, it's hard to be like, well, they played well, they didn't do well. I mean, how can you make it, you know, based on how everything comes together, but all the situational stuff I think is worth looking at. And it also, I mean, and granted, these are completely different personnel groups, but the Panthers walked out of the locker room, walked down the field and scored a field goal. One for a couple of mistakes, might've scored a touchdown, walked down the field and did it. Um, and then they came out in the second half with a completely different personnel group and walked down the field and scored a touchdown. So if I'm Ron Rivera, those are the two items that I'm emphasizing to my team. Third downs, we went through this, guys. You know, we need to fix this, whatever it takes. And the coming out of the locker room, why are we starting slow? Both halves. Both halves starting slow. And then for me, with preseason is about learning, right? So, for example, that touchdown that um, Carolina had off the fumble, and Kendall Fuller was in coverage on that side. So I'm talking like, what do you learn from a play like that in the season? Because you're seeing a team for the first time. So you had a formation that he said, the, the good thing about a play like that is that if you see this information, he knows that now I'm going to stay back a little bit. He got caught up coming a little bit too far inside. You know, when he said, I should have recognized the state, he's got to stay inside there. So he's got this area. I can stay back if I see that. That's what the preseason is also about is learning because they're not game planning. Yeah. They, haven't, they haven't seen that rep. But that's the beauty of the preseason. The other thing is the third downs is where my concern would be. There was one time, I think it was Cam Curl and, and Paul Holcomb, and there was that pass over the middle. I think it was a 19-yard game. And that's one where Cam is looks like man-to-man -man and almost looks like Cole's in zone. The guy's crossing where either Paul Curl is supposed to stay on that side or Cole's got to go with him, one or the other. But <laughs> Curl goes with his guy and Paul kind of stays there. Those are the miscommunications that have yeah. happened. So, but you know, in general, I mean, do you feel like they recovered from that, or do you, you know, would you yeah. look at them and say, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I mean, you know, like little things that I noticed, like, and this is not a surprise. Like, David Mayo in coverage is going to be a problem. David Mayo in rundowns is going to be fine. But David Mayo in coverage is going to be a problem that got exploited a little bit today. But that's not something that I didn't really know. And there's one other thing, like if this happened in a real game. Um, there'd be a cost to pay for it. Shaka Tony's penalty at the end of the game is unacceptable. I mean, really, you here's the thing. Like, you know you can't hit anybody in the head anymore. I mean, that's that's widely known. I watched the presentation that the NFL just recently put out about rule changes and emphasis on rules, and I was glad to see it happen here. If you touch somebody in the head, especially a quarterback, I mean, literally touch it, they blow up like dead, which is what they did. So we're just telling you right now, play's over. That's it. And that was a 15-yard penalty with under a minute to go, up one. You know, there is, with Chase Young, we don't know how long he's going to be out. James Smith williams is probably starting in week one, assuming health. Casey Tuhill looked really good on passing downs, actually, is probably a primary backup. But there are a lot of guys that are fighting to be on this roster on day one. William Bradley King, uh, Daniel Wise, F.A. Obata, and Shaka Tony, who had a couple of really great moments. And then he had one that you can't take back that loses a game for you. And I don't know if they would have converted that third down anyway, but he didn't give them a chance. And then they got to run the clock out and kick a field goal. Like, it's not a big deal because no one's going to remember it. It's a preseason game. But if that happens against Jacksonville in week one, well, then what are people saying? Ron Rivera, Jack Del Rio will remember that. Right. I think they will. So that's a big deal to me, especially for someone who he's trying to make the team. You know, that's a very competitive, because of Chase Young's absence, that's a very competitive spot. The only other thing I think I would I would um, point out, who was the safety who just got here that was hitting people? Parker? Yes. Yeah. Number you know, 16. Yes. That was, um, you know, again, that's another spot that's, uh, you know, I think is competitive. You know, Derek Force seems to have taken a lead. He's probably part of this rotation. But either a young player or someone like him is going to get that job. And he looks like he wants it. If you like, you see guys hit like that or be where they're supposed to be like that in preseason games, especially a veteran, he wants that job. That was noticeable to me, too. Oh, absolutely. And the other guy I want to ask about is Jamin Davis. And I'll get your thought in a minute. And it's hard because, like, unless you know where they're supposed to go all the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The one play that stood out to me was him 
and it looked like he filled the hole okay. Um, the one play that stood out to me, there was like, I think a one yard gain around the left side. But the way he met the linebacker in the hole, he was aggressive to the hole. He met him a yard or so deep in the backfield, forces an early cut. And maybe I'm trying to look too hard for something to say, hey, this is a sign of his growth. I don't know that we can, we can't go there yet, but it was at least a good play where you say, okay, good job taking on the blocker. Did you see anything from him? I am that, like, I bring that I bring that play up because the other plays I saw, fill in the hole, fill in the hole. I don't know if he's in the right hole, but that's the one play where I'm like, oh, okay, he actually collided with somebody and he forced a good play by someone else. Yeah, not really today. And I think this goes back to camp where we talk a lot about him, but he's a big storyline and he can be an impact player. And in camp, like every day we're like, is he doing the right thing or not? Is he making it like, I don't really know the answer to that one way or the other. I just don't know the answer to it. And today was another day where he didn't make a lot of plays. He also didn't make any glaring mistakes that were obvious. So I don't know what to make of it at this point. I almost need the coaches to tell me, honestly, on the side, what's the deal? Because I, I don't see a guy making impact plays, and I don't see a guy being a liability either. Right. So is he just a guy? Like, what, what's happening here? Well, that's why I kind of laugh at myself for like, I'm pointing out a play where he took on a block. Now, it was a good play, but it's like you're trying to see something to say, like, in year two, this guy's going to take a jump or not. And I think you're right. Like, this a lot, a lot of times last year, or even some of the games where he's active, like, did he, what did he do? And so that yeah. like, they need to see him take that step. I mean, assuming he's on the field a lot, which I think is a broad assumption at this point, but assuming that he is, I'm going to go back to something that when I talked to Cole Holcomb like a week ago that he said, right, that really like kind of was eye-opening to me thinking about Davis. Because I you know, I said to, I was like to Cole, like, what's a good season for you? And he's like, I'm the middle linebacker. I better be leading this team in tackles. I better be making plays. And I thought about that for a second, and I'm like, the linebackers should be the ones making all the tackles. Like, really, one, two ought to be Holcomb and Davis. And then – a safety, Cam Curl, Bobby McCain, maybe, and then maybe a defensive lineman, but they don't make the tackles. The defensive lineman set it up for the linebackers and the safety to make the tackles. If his numbers are fourth, fifth on the, then something's wrong. And that just means he's not making enough plays. Is he a liability? It doesn't feel that way. But is he impacting the game the way someone in that position should? Not yet. And we're not seeing that. Yeah, and was there anybody else that jumped out at you? Um, it's always a lot easier to go back and watch the games and find out more of the, like, this guy in the 13, whatever, did this or not. But is there anybody else that jumped out at you that we haven't talked about? I think Parker really jumped out to me a lot. Uh, Forrest jumped out again. He, but I've seen this in camp with him. There's clearly growth there, and this guy wants to hit people, so and he, he almost can't miss that. Um, I thought Wentz was out. I thought the offensive line in general with all the moving around was, was pretty good. I mean, all things considered, I talked to Ron Rivera last week and and he was like, I think more bracing for like, look, we're going to play a lot of guys. It's kind of the situation currently we're in by necessity, but it may be a recurring thing that occurs throughout the year. Get used to it. Um, you know, the hope is always to have a starting five, but I don't know that that's what the future is for this team. And they believe that that's go can get them in a position to, rotate people and so you know i think all things considered the offensive line didn't break down very much and wentz had time and al had time and heineke had time you know so like that was that was promising because i was after the first couple of weeks of practice that wasn't pretty like what was happening with the d-line versus the o-line and the one thing they kept saying that ron Rivera would always talk about is that when they put the pads on the lineman can be more aggressive going at the d-line we felt like early on they were absorbing too much which led to pressure I also think it'll matter when Chase Rui gets back. I agree. Big... Yep, I think so, and I don't know when that's going to happen. Like, I don't know what the plan is with him. He was out in warm-ups today. We knew he wasn't going to play, but we he was out in warm-ups today. So they're getting him, ramping him up, and does he need to play in the preseason games? Maybe not, you know. And then, like, what's the plan for the third one anyway? Is anyone going to play? You know, like, those, those typically are the days that all the backups who are trying to make the team end up playing most of it anyway. So he may not play the week one. We'll have to see what next week looks like. Um, but I think the offensive line is its my biggest concern really going into the season. Hopefully some of these guys will come back tight ends too. Hopefully these guys will come back and that will feel a little bit better. But I think actually for game one, I actually feel relatively good about what I saw just in general. Yeah. And 
last last thing then looking out here and it's still weird for me commanders in the end zone yeah. commanders along the side yeah. you know it's it still feels weird did it how was it calling a game so i wanted to think about this before the season started was i going to change my touchdown ball so mm -hmm. i started as washington football team so you know it was touchdown touchdown washington because what else was i going to say and i thought about this through the off season like should i change it and I, it, it just felt natural just to keep it. So I did. But throughout the game, I wanted to emphasize to say commanders over and over and over. I want to get used to saying it. And it was awkward, really, at first. And then by the third quarter, you know, like, felt normal. And then, you know, I thought was really strange was hearing the marching band all of a sudden again and playing hail to the commanders, how hail to the Redskins. Um, I did, they're in preseason, too. Someone needs to remind them. You cue them after the extra point or after the two-point conversion. So we'll, we'll work out the kinks there. but. I actually enjoyed hearing the song played again. That was really nostalgic for me. Um, but it is, it's different, you know. And I remember last year when we were in New York, week um, 18, week 18, we were in New York and looking down on the field, I remember thinking like, this is the last time I'm ever going to see them look like that again with that jersey and the helmets and, you know, and they looked really different. I mean, that helmet is different. I like it, but it, it's different. The jersey's way different. They're way different today. It says commanders in bold at the end zone. Like, we are really in a different time. So it, it's kind of get used to it. And I think it'll settle in. I think if they win, it'll help too. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that'll help a lot. Bram, thanks a lot for joining me. We'll be back next Saturday after they play the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City. Good are you place. going? I am not going. I am not You're going. The barbecue king. What are you kidding? I'll be That's like the barbecue hub of the world. What are you doing? I'll barbecue at home. And I'm and I'm okay. Right. I'm okay staying at home in the preseason. Got to save my energy. You want me to mail you some ribs? I'll be making some on that Sunday. Right. So trust me, you brisket or ribs on that Sunday. Yeah. But anyways, we'll be back that after the Chiefs game to talk about that game. I'll be back on Tuesday to wrap up practice. They have a Monday afternoon practice, but the Tuesday one will be the bigger deal. So um, wrap it up then. Bram, thanks for joining me. Thanks. That's it for this episode. I'll be back on Tuesday as Washington resumes practice this week. They'll have a three o'clock practice on Monday. We're going to do a next practice report. will be after Tuesday's morning workout. Talk to you next time.